I never really understood the big deal when it came to weddings. But since moving back home to Nigeria six years ago and getting married, I soon found out how big a deal it really is. But what happens once the party's over and it's just the two of you? I started to think about this. As much as I've heard about the romance of it all, I've also heard about the stress, the fallouts, fights and everything in between. Divorced after six months, happy being a mistress, the seven year itch, eight years dating but no ring in sight. The topics were endless. So I wanted to see what regular people had to say on these topics. I've spoken to single people, married people and counsellors. Maybe if we're all open about our experiences, someone out there may be able to take something good out of this. And I might learn a thing or two myself. Hi guys, welcome to So You Want to Get Married. So You Want to Get Married is table talk where we talk about anything and everything to do with love, dating, marriage, sex, the whole shebang. Today I'm joined by an amazing panel of guests. We've got technology consultant, Banky, production manager, Fumbi, and filmmaker, Shay. Hi guys. Hi. Hello. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming on over. Sure. So today's topic is dealing with the in-laws. <laughs> Now, okay. the reason I've got the, well, first of all, I'm really happy it's the three of you because, um, so Shay's engaged, Fumbi, you're dating, and Banky, you're married. So a lot of people might think, okay, if you're not yet married, what do you have to say? But there's actually different levels to in-laws because even when you're dating, the guy's family, they're still, you know what I mean? Yeah. So <laughs> I'm, that's what, I just wanted to stress that in case people are like, well, why do we have these people on the panel? So now, I know that, um, your spouse's family is very important to them, which means they should, in part, be important to you as well. My first question is, should you, and if you should, how do you set boundaries with your in-laws? So let's start with the married man on the panel first. So Banky, you go first. What Thank do you, you think? Thank you very much. Uh, I think I've been very lucky uh, because my in-laws are fabulous. I'm not just saying that for the camera. <laughs> okay, I was going to say, I was going to uh, say. I remember... I'll start with when I asked, when I told my dad I was going to propose, mm. my dad goes, good luck. And that was it. After proposal, um, I approached, uh, I approached uh, my wife's dad and he goes, thank you for making an honest, uh, an, an honest woman out of my daughter. My mother-in-law was overjoyed. Typical African Nigerian. Hey, okay, our prayers have been. <laughs> Daughter is getting married. Yeah. So everybody was very excited, and um, the good thing was our parents knew each other, and um, there was no beef. Setting boundaries um, was just based on one-on-one -on -one relationships with each in-law. Okay. So I have a special relationship with my father-in-law. I have a different relationship with my mother-in-law, and have different sets of relationships with each of my wife's Sibling, sister, yeah. the siblings. Mm -hmm. And um, it's human relationship. It's not in-law relationship. Mm. It's human relationship. Okay. So that's how we deal with it. Okay, cool. So Shay, what was the difference between when you were just dating and when you got engaged? Did things shift slightly with um, your fiance's parents or with her family or are things still the same? I mean, things definitely, um, took uh it's for me a course that i'd never been privy to before really yeah honestly i mean like you when you're dating a girl like all right you know it's you're dealing with her like hell i like you and stuff i mean it's kind of your thing and you're going out and you're on that thing but it's kind of like an like, invisible army behind her, right? <laughs> i like, like that it's an army that you don't know you're not aware of yet yeah. and the minute it's this is gonna get a little more serious mm. then they start to show each other think of a chessboard right it's like you got the pawns and like oh man now is how do I navigate this yeah. thing? And for me, it's a little, it's a little more challenging because we're culturally very different. I'm a Yoruba boy, and then not Yoruba. Okay. So there were things to me that were completely alien mm. that I never understood as it e being even serious, having any kind of ramifications. Oh, okay. Of I see either what like, you mean. Is, is that vulgar? Is that rude? Is that this? And so all these potholes that I was like, I have no idea how I'm mm. going through it. And I was basically like, you know, let me sneak it. You know, fall into one thing after, after the another. Other, right? I was like, I can't do any right. I yeah. don't know how, how to get the stuff. So it was, it was really, really tough. And 
I'm still just trying to figure it out, to be honest with you. Oh, I think you know, that's it, as like, time I'm goes on. I'm trying to figure it out. But the one thing I always kept in, my, in the back of my mind was my mother always told me from a young age, like, look, end of the day, like, Shayla, you can marry whoever you want to marry. I don't have to live with you. Yeah. Like, she always said that to me, even she was joking, like, I don't have to live with you. So, can you wake up next to this person and still want to be there? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Even, I mean, after the ceremony, whenever that happens, the end of the day, it's like you're in a room you know, with that person. Like, how is this going to work? So, Fumbi, I want to ask you so you're dating, and a lot of people might think, okay, well, so why is she here? Because, you know, but you know, I know because when I was just dating, <laughs> There's two your in-laws. Yeah. Am I right? Yep. So can you care to elaborate on that? Um, okay, so I think first of all, with in-laws you you have to put in the work. Yeah. And like you said before, if this person is important to the person that you're dating, like in that this is this person's mom and dad, mm. then by all means you have to you have to work at them not just ex not accepting you per se, but embracing you as their sons. Yeah. You know wife to be. Same thing goes with the siblings as well. So whether he has sisters or whether he has brothers. Mm. And what well, with me, I didn't go into the relationship thinking, oh my God, his mom is just going to like, ah, this is, mine. Yeah. this is my daughter. Mm. So no, like I went into it knowing that, okay, there might be some reservations. She would do some investigations, which mm. I think she did. <laughs> and <laughs> thankfully did not come back you know, yeah. complaining and saying, ah, this is this problem that we have yeah. with this girl. So I think, yeah, I mean, no, 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 criminal no, charge, no, nothing. So I mean, I think I went into it sort of prepared with that sort of mindset, yeah. like, hey, this man is not going to accept me like that. So there you go. I might as well just prepare myself and then put in the work. And so when we started dating, um, I would go over to see and to mm. check on them. And then I got her contact number and um, um, his dad's contact number as well. And I will call them. Yeah. And you know, the good things, I mean, I'm, I'm a Yoruba girl, so yeah. I'm raised as a Yoruba girl. Mm. Um, and although sometimes I tell myself that I yeah, I'm not cultural, but this is the one time, the one area in my life that where you, men, yeah, I, was, you have to. I was as cultural as I could <laughs> be. Like, go and see them and I'm, I'm on my two knees, yeah, you know, kneeling down, it. just paying respect, yeah. knowing that, look, um, I want to have a peaceful marriage in my life. Right, there you so, go. Exactly. Whatever it is, and I, I think can that's do really right what it boils down exactly. to. Exactly. Whatever it is, I can do right now to make sure that the yeah. next couple of years of my life mm. are going to be peaceful with them. Please let me do it. Yeah. I don't mind. Exactly. And I also think, I mean, you care for your partner, so you want to make them happy as well. Yeah. So my question now is, if you have a disagreement, or if you're unhappy with something one of your in-laws has done, do you address it? directly or do you go through your partner how do you deal with it okay um, the married man yeah thank you <laughs> so i've had issues with my in-laws um, but i've also had issues with my parents i've had ah, issues with my yes. sisters i've had there issues with go. my brothers and so as i said earlier it's human relationships mm. uh, that matters we can't look at them as in-laws we look at them as family mm. Um, so, yes, my spouse is the bridge and I usually make her very uncomfortable when I address certain things. Mm. I remember uh, once um, myself, my mother-in-law and my wife were driving. Uh, this was in the UK. I was driving and um, I knew exactly where I was going following the road sign. My mother-in-law was the back backseat driver. I don't like taxi drivers, regardless of who you are. Oh turn left, turn right, oh no, go this way. <laughs> and it got to a point where I had to just tell her, look, mommy, I'm the one driving and I know what I'm doing. I saw my wife melt into the front seat. But the honest truth of the matter was that once that was done, we go where we were going, we kept on chatting because there was l love between yeah. us. And guess what? Anytime when she's in the car with me, she doesn't comment about the driving. So issue resolved, resolved addressed resolved. and resolved. Yeah. Some people might not take it the same way. Oh, they see that's the thing. But then it was based on the sort of relationship that I had with my mother-in-law. It's honest. He so could living. easily have told, you know, his mother-in-law, not shut up, but like, I'm, I'm driving um, now, yeah. so don't distract me. You can't, I, you I, don't I, do that. I will not do it. Don't do it. <laughs> you don't even need to tell me. I like, will do it because yeah. I will always, always go through my, my, my partner. But Jay, I want to ask you, what do you, 
what would you do if you're, you found that your in-laws weren't accepting you? So if you're in a relationship with someone and you just find it that like, you can't do any right, it's difficult, what, what sort of action would you take? <laughs> I chuckle because what you're asking me is kind of like what a life. What's, go what's going <laughs> through? Actually, like right through? Oh, I've, okay. actually, I've actually lived it. Yeah. And, I mean, I hope I'm not trying to like put them. I'm not trying to put them. No, in the spot no, you're just being honest. Yeah. In any kind of way. Look, I'm still, I'm still going through some of this stuff, man. <laughs> like, I don't have any. Okay, so what steps are you making? Like, what, what do you do to maybe try and smooth things over, or do you go through your fiance and say? I'm still things? Mr. Bean right now. I am like. <laughs> A lot of things I don't know what's going on to be honest with you. Yeah. Like they had this perception of who they thought I was. Yeah, that's because that's of what I do for a yeah. living. And I'm like, then I heard her talking to with someone, I, I don't quite remember who. And I was like, who are you guys talking about? I'm like, I have no idea who that, that person, person is. is. But that's not me. But it's definitely not yeah. me. Like, yeah. oh man, I'm sure you womanize is going out all this pee and hacks out with actresses all the time. I'm like, I ain't got a clue what you're talking well, yeah, about. Yeah. Like, so it's, it's weird for me. And I'm like, all right. But yeah. just got it better now is all I can tell you. There you go. Well, prior to that, man, it didn't make any sense to me. Situations are different, right? And, but one thing that prevails, whatever situation it is, is wisdom. Being able to read the, read the floor, read, read the game, as it were, and deal with people based on how they want to be treated. If I had issues with, my, with being accepted mm -hmm. uh, by my in-laws, um, and I... I tried hard, I did what I was supposed yeah. to do, and, and it, still this, wasn't, it still wasn't working. Yeah. I would 100% face my spouse. Yeah. And pour all Your my effort attention, and energy into love that. and attention into, yeah. into that and make that work. Once your spouse, your fiance, your boyfriend, mm. whoever, is happy, and the happiness can be seen by all, yeah. anybody who comes and says anything other than that, is the enemy of progress. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I, I mean? Agree. I agree. I think, I think well People said. Well said. And I'm really sorry that I'm going to have to yeah. cut you off because we're really running out of time and we have to go to our question of the day. And our question of the day, just so you guys know, is like basically totally unrelated. So you might raise eyebrows like, what is she asking? But it's um, what um, our viewers sent to the Facebook page. So make sure you send me a message or to our email, um, so you want marry at gmail.com. So our question of the day is, <clears throat> my boyfriend is addicted to porn. <laughs> Let me finish now. <laughs> My boyfriend is addicted to porn but doesn't want to have sex with me. What should I do? Find another boyfriend. <laughs> I, I think it's actually... Oh, that's really? Still. Break up. <laughs> really? That's... So, do you, so what's the problem, though? It's over. That's it. That relationship can't work. Oh, dear. So is it that the boyfriend doesn't fancy her anymore? Or? No. Sex is very powerful. Mm. I was in an, uh, I, I'm not an angel. Mm. Uh, but for the record and the purpose of this interview, I was a virgin when I got married. High five. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, no investigations. Um, yeah, so my children can know that, yeah, daddy didn't do anything. Daddy always got 100% as well at school. Oh, my days. So, sex is very powerful. Mm. And um, there's all sorts of scriptural and spiritual laws mm. behind sex. Um, Sex is a soul tie. Uh, pornography opens you to a world of, yeah. of really horrible things. Mm. It may be in jest, or it may be playfully watching mm. it, or just being inquisitive. But once it becomes an addiction, yeah. it's a serious problem. And if it doesn't stop, is going to go on and it's going to lead to other, other things. things. Yeah, exactly. Okay, well, and everyone just says dump him, basically. Yeah. Is that what you're all saying? Yeah. Because we've actually run out change. of time. If it doesn't so change, if it doesn't change. I think yeah. dump him first and then. Like, Will he even notice he's too busy watching porn, isn't he? <laughs> I think uh, dump him first only just because. It's a um, wrap. Just let him go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, 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 you need, to, you need so to also protect yourself. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah exactly. You to, don't waste your time, girl. Yeah, do not exactly. waste your time. Dump him first. <laughs> All right, well, you guys, you've been absolutely amazing. I had so much fun this episode. Thank you guys so much, and I hope you come another time. Fantastic. Uh, absolutely. All right, guys, that's it for another episode of So You Want to Get Married, and we will see you next time. Take care. Bye. To watch some more episodes of So You Want to Get Married, all you have to do is head to my YouTube channel, Marcy's Projects. Enjoy.